Hi guys, in this video we will build our first Excel calculations, basically our first Excel formulas. And before we start, let me type in some data. So I'm just going to put a headers, name, hours, uh, hourly rate, revenue. And you see here, I typed in hourly rate and it's, uh, let me just go back. I typed in hourly rate and it's a bit too big for that cell. And once I type in revenue, uh, you see that revenue covers now or that uh, covers now part of that word. One can't, one can't read that word or these two words correctly. How can I change that? I'll show you in a second. Just revenue, cost, let me finish the headers, cost and profits. So as you see, some columns are too narrow for the headers and some are too wide. How can I change that? Two ways to change column width. One is both, both, uh, uh, in both cases, you gotta go to the top of the column at the right end of that specific column and then drag it to the right, you make it bigger and to the left, you make it smaller. So I'm gonna make this bigger and let's say this bigger, this a bit bigger, okay? Another way of getting the best fit column is basically if you double click on that the column gets just as big as necessary it just uh, automatically excel automatically fits the column to the content in it so that column is just as big as necessary and if i here let's do the same thing with revenue now the column will compress until to this position here let me try it out i go to the right edge and then double click and bam you got it okay let me just make them a bit wider so Okay, that, that, that settles column width. Now let me type in some data and then we can then start our calculations. So I typed in all the data and you see uh, Excel automatically aligns text to the left and numbers to the right. But that shouldn't bother us because uh, we can change the alignment any way we wish. And the way you do it is, one way of doing it is basically you select the columns. So basically I select A and if I, if I keep my mouse key pressed, I can select all columns here and then go align center. And everything's now centered. The same method could be applied by selecting rows and then, you know, apply the alignment you wish. Or you can select the region, a specific region. The advantage of selecting the columns is that once you input further data in future, it will be aligned as well. Just let me type uh, another another piece of data, let's say gray, and then um, 32, uh, I don't know, like 40, and uh, 630, okay? And you see that will um, aligned, uh, center, cent centered, basically. Right, now let's get to our calculations. Okay, now, revenue is basically nothing more than hours multiplied by hourly rate. So let's try it out. Where is this guy's hours? This guy's hours is like 23 times uh, 39. What do I get? I get nothing. Uh, well, first lesson is that in order for Excel to calculate, you have to give it a sort of a sign telling it, okay, you know what? Now this is a formula and not just a, a text string. And to denote a formula in Excel, use an equals. You proceed any formula you write in Excel, you you proceed it with an equal sign. Okay, equal 23 times 39. Let's try it out. Well, we're getting now an error saying that you don't for multiplication you don't use the x uh, sign, but the star. Do you wish to replace it? Yeah. And now it calculates, okay? So basically, let me just repeat. If you're gonna write the formula, it's gonna be equals 23 times, don't forget, times in, uh, in Excel is the star, 39. Bam, you got it. Uh, another, the other uh, two mathematical signs, plus and minus, they're the same, they don't change in Excel. So basically I can say plus works, minus as well. Uh, division, you use the slash, okay? And let's, let me revert that to multiplication because that's actually the right formula, right? Okay, let me do, try it out again here. Equals, where's this guy's hours? Here, 15 
times this guy's hourly rate, 55. Okay, so formula works perfectly. Uh, it's working correctly. Now I've got two problems with this sort of formula. First of all, if I, the revenue is still the same. Why? Because it's still got the old formula in it. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, cater for that change here. And my second problem is I've got to type in that formula for every single person here. And I only got like seven people. What if I have like 200 people? It's going to take all day just to type this simple formula. And by continuously retyping it, I'm bound to make a, an error or a mistake at some point. So this kind of formula is not very uh, attractive in Excel. So how do I how do I how do I build my Excel formula? Well, in Excel now, now that's the most important thing in this whole video is that in Excel you never use values in your formula, but you use cell addresses. So basically, I don't care about how many hours this guy works and his hourly rate. All I care about is the following. That's how I write my formula. Equals where is this guy's hours? This guy's hours are in the B2, okay? So I just write B2 because his hours are in the B2. And you see, Excel automatically selected that cell. Okay, multiplication. Where is this guy's hourly rate? This guy's hourly rate is in C2, okay? C2. Formula done, return, okay? And I got it. And the beauty of this formula is now that if I change the hourly rate, Bam, his revenue changes. If I change his hours, bam, his revenue changes. So it's way more attractive than this formula. This formula depends on constant values, whereas this one depends on variables, on the cell addresses. I don't care. That formula doesn't care about the values. All it cares about is this times this. Whatever is in this times whatever is in this. And this is the way you write your Excel formulas. Never, ever use constant values in an Excel formula, always use cell addresses. Because one thing for sure, all those constants, they're going to change at some point in time. And then you would have to update your formula. You see? Now, if I, I'll, I'll show you. For instance, here, in this one, in the first one, I've got the right, I've got a perfect formula. If I change the hours, all I have to do is type in the new, the new hours and my revenue changes. Here, in this one, I've still got the wrong formula. If I change the, the hours, I've got to go back in this formula and update it with the new hours for it to be correct. That's a double hassle. I don't need. Now, here, we, we, we created the formula by typing in the cell addresses. There's an easier way to do it. I'll show it here. Equals. I don't type in B3. I click it. And Excel types it in for me. And then multiplication. And then where's this guy's hourly rate? It's here. I click it. Bang. It's in there. I don't have to type the cell addresses. I just click them. Okay? And then return. Now, what do I do with the rest of these guys? I'm not going to type the formula for each of these. But what you do is you click in the formula there, in the last formula you got. And then you go to the bottom right uh, uh, corner of your cell. Until you see your, your, your mouse pointer changes to that black cross. And now you press your mouse key, hold it pressed, and drag it down. What you're now doing, or basically what we're now doing, we are basically uh, autofilling that formula the rest of the guys. And there you go. Excel just transmitted or, 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 or autofilled that formula to the rem to the remaining people. And let's see in detail what it exactly did. That was the formula I created. Now, and then from that point, I dragged down, I autofilled. So what happens here? Look, here it's B3 times C3. What is here? It is C4, uh, sorry, B4 times C4. So basically what Excel did, it changed the B3 times C3 into B4 times C4. Let's go one down. Here it's now B5 times C5. So you see, by autofilling, Excel adapts the formula so that it calculates, it, gi it gives you the right revenue for each, um, for each row.
okay and this one it takes this one and by drag or auto filling it changes in 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 in, in this row it's b3 times c3 one row down the three becomes a four one row down the four becomes a five and so on so that's why in excel you basically create the formula for the first row or the first cell and then you auto fill it to the remainder just write the formula once this way you don't have any repetition errors let's try profits for profits are basically nothing more than revenue minus costs okay so equals I click on revenue where's the revenue of this guy this guy's revenue is here okay so I click here minus where's this guy's costs here and go and I got it. and now I click in here again go to the bottom right corner and drag it down or autofill to the remaining guys and I got my formulas and this is the way you calculate in Excel and in Excel it, you don't have to always start from the top and, and, and autofill to the bottom you can also take it the other way around okay let's let's try it out I'm just deleting I could write the formula at the bottom equals this guy's hours times this guy's hourly rate click back in go to the bottom right corner wait till my mouse pointer changes to black cross and autofill upwards works as well I get the same results here same thing equals revenue minus costs return go back in bottom right corner wait for that black cross and then autofill upwards in this case and I got it. okay so you don't always you don't have to go at the top and autofill downwards you can you can take it you can start at the bottom and and, and autofill upwards uh, only thing is that in most uh, practical Excel um, applications you have a long list and basically it's easier to start at the top and then autofill downwards but Hey, if you wish to start at bottom and autofill upwards, it's your choice. It's doable. Okay. And now you can see here how Excel formulas are being, uh, sorry, how, how formulas or calculations are being created in Excel. Use, always use cell addresses, never use constant values.